And we're going to begin in Isaiah 29. Isaiah chapter 29. We're going to look at a couple of verses there beginning at verse number 13. God has a word for us this morning. As you turn to Isaiah 29 after you get there, um, God has a word for us. And the word today is entitled, Prepare to Meet Your God. Amen. Prepare to meet your God. Now, that actual... we got to get this right. Amen. Praise God. Turn it right to the page. Amen. That's, a, that's an actual scripture that comes from Amos, chapter 4, verse number 12. And if you read uh, Amos chapter 4, that's really God pronouncing a warning and judgment through the, pro through the prophet Amos. Where he said, prepare to meet your God, because he was talking to people who were rebellious and wouldn't repent. Mm -hmm. And so Amos uh, uh, said those words as a warning of God's impending judgment. Prepare to meet your God. But, but that's not how God is speaking unto us today, through that phrase. Amen? Okay. So no one get nervous <laughs> up in here. Amen? Amen. And it's also, I know sometimes, you know, uh, when people say, okay, prepare to meet your maker. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that in the movies sometimes, you know, when right. the guy, the character's about to, right. you know, mm -hmm. meet their demise. Prepare to meet your maker. God's not saying it in that fashion either. So, uh, again, just, <laughs> but he yet is saying unto us today, prepare to meet your God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Prepare to meet your God. And, and we're going to find um, our scripture reading this morning coming from Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Do we have it? Amen. Amen. Let's look at it together. The Lord says this. He says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Amen. Now I want to read those two scriptures from the Amplified Version. And it says this, And the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but remove their hearts and minds far from me, and their fear and reverence for me are a commandment of men that is learned by repetition without any thought as to the meaning. Therefore, behold, I will again do marvelous things with this people, marvelous and astonishing things and the wisdom of their wise men will perish and the understanding of their discerning men will vanish or be hidden let's pray now father we bless you now as we come to your word we're hungry for it god feed us and yes. father we shall be filled father open our eyes that we may see our ears that we may hear yes. and god we bless you for this for this word uh, for this time of, of, of impartation, for this yes, time of receiving. Yes. And God, I ask you now to bless me, to yes. just simply do your will, not my will, but your will be done, not my words, but your words be spoken. Yes. And Father, let all the glory be yours, because truly, God, you alone are worthy of the praise. And we give it to you now as we prepare our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Prepare to meet your God. This passage of scripture, Jesus actually used it when he was talking to the Pharisees to confront them in their hypocrisy. Because what they were doing, amen, what they were doing uh, was acting as if they were dedicated to the Lord. And they were doing it with their mouths, uh, but not with their lives. And he said, well did Isaiah prophesy of you. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know that 
God says to us today, prepare to meet your God because there are a lot of us here who aren't even, even now aren't prepared to meet God. Because our minds are wandering, where uh, our thoughts are other places, our eyes are other places, and and God says, I, I, remember Jesus came walking on the water a couple of weeks ago. Right. Mm -hmm. How many of us wouldn't have been prepared for that miraculous thing because if we act like we do in church, we'd be looking somewhere else. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus walking. I said, where's Jesus come by? And he over there. <laughs> Prepare to me. Here's the thing with God. Was, and Lord, help me today. Preparation, we can start here. Preparation for a thing really shows how much that thing matters to us. How much we prepare. Amen? How much we prepare for a thing will show us and will show the world how much we, that thing is of value to us. If it is of real value to you, you will prepare for it. Wow. Or if a person is of uh, real value to you, you will prepare for him or her. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, a person who's going on a job interview who doesn't prepare in this day and age for that job interview really doesn't want that job. Wow. But most people who go on a job interview who want the job, they'll prepare for it. They'll do some research. Amen. Amen. They'll Google the company. They'll do some research on the person who's going to be interviewing them if they know who the interviewer is. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're trying to get a connection, find out what school they went to, and try to get some little bits and pieces of information. Mm -hmm. You'll do research on the company. Mm -hmm. You may talk to somebody who works there already or who knows somebody who works there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's all part of your preparation for your interview. Yes, you're going to pick up your clothes yes. and your shoes. And you're going to get your resume in order, but you're not going to stop there. You're going to do some more, what, preparation. Because you really want that job. Amen. Preparation will show. If a person just shows up to the interview and they don't know anything about the company or the person who's interviewing, they really don't want that job. They just rolled out of bed and went to the interview. <laughs> yeah. What if you were going to have a barbecue? You didn't even prepare for that. You wouldn't just wake up on one great Saturday morning and go downstairs and turn on your barbecue. You'd probably go to the supermarket a couple of days in advance and get the meat. you probably season the meat a couple of days in advance and let it marinate. you make sure you have the drinks and the cups and the, and the utensils and the napkins. You'd make some salad that morning. you make sure you have enough ice. You wouldn't just say, I'm having a barbecue, come on over, and people come, and you made no preparation for it, mm. would you? No. You would prepare. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. A good student, hear what God is saying, a one who wants to pass the class will prepare for the test. Amen. That's right. Am I right about it? Amen. If you want to pass the test, you will prepare. You'll read your notes. You'll yes. study. You'd get a good night's sleep. Yeah. You'd pay attention in class when the teacher was talking and teaching. Why? Because this is all part of your what? Your preparation. Right? Amen. Anything that's important to us, we prepare for. Amen? Amen. Mm. See, somebody getting quiet because they know God's setting you up. <laughs> because now God says, on this great morning, this Sunday morning, when you knew you were coming to church, what preparations did you undertake in order to prepare to meet your God? Wow. Did you just get up and put on your clothes? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Huh? Did you just get up and iron a, you know, iron a shirt, iron a suit, eat your breakfast, and then get here and just go, okay. Where's the preparation? Mm. Amen? Amen? Again, success, of, whether it's a barbecue, an interview, a test, or a successful encounter with God all depends upon how much preparation you do in advance. Mm -hmm. And yet, all across this great body, God is saying there are so many of my people who come to church who aren't prepared to meet their God. Mm -hmm. They just walk in. Amen? Mm -hmm. You just walk in. What preparation did you do? See, God says, if you want to really prepare to meet me, you should spend some time with me before you get here. Hmm? 
Open up your Bible, read a couple of verses. Why? Because that's where you, that's my word, that's my voice, that's my will being expressed. Yes. Amen? Amen? Spend time praying and meditating. Spend time in quiet reflection. Spend time in prayer. Amen? Why? Because that, that, that's part of the preparation of coming into the presence of God. Amen. You just can't come into the presence of God. How many of you know that the Lord said that he is an all-consuming fire? Amen. Amen? Some of us are just stumbling into the presence of God and wondering why we're getting burned. Amen. Not ready, amen? Wow. we got to prepare. Confess your sins unto God, amen? amen? Why? To get cleansed, to get your heart purified so that you can come in and have a meeting with God. But how is it that we can prepare for a barbecue and an interview and a test and all these other things that go on into our life? How is it that we can prepare to go on vacation, but we can't prepare to come and see God? Wow. How is that possible? How many times, and listen, God is just in everybody's Kool-Aid this morning, so don't feel bad. Because we all got company here. How many of us just roll into a Bible study and then really, and our heart ain't ready for it? How many of us go down in the morning at our kitchen table just open the Bible and start reading a verse? Amen. Amen. Hmm? And then one, I ain't really getting them. You're not prepared. Hmm. Prepare to meet your God. God wants us to prepare for him. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me, is God worth preparing for? Yes. 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 Amen. Yes, he is worth preparing for. Remember when you, well, I'm just talking to all the folks now. There are a couple of married folk in the room. So you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Remember when you really liked that guy? And when it's time to go out on a date, you didn't just throw on any old thing. You prepared. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You got it. You got it. You got spliffy. <laughs> Spliffy. <laughs> you did your hair, your nails were just right, your clothes had to be ironed just right, you had the right pocketbook to match the shoes, <laughs> everything. Why? Because you were what? You were preparing for your date. Mm -hmm. Homeboy got a haircut, <laughs> he took a shower. <laughs> People are like, why are you taking a shot? You must be getting prepared <laughs> for a day. <laughs> but he got ready, amen? Mm -hmm. Isn't this something, though? This is not to say, this is why we got to be careful in marriage. After a while, you, you know, now you're going, you got to throw on some sweat. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just true, right? Yeah. And this doesn't mean you really don't care anymore, but sometimes you got to say, you know what? It's nice to prepare for a nice night on the town. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen? We don't even prepare to go to the restaurant. We drive the car on the way there. What do you feel like eating? Don't even prepare. When before you were going out, you had it all mapped out. Amen. Right? Right. Why? Because it meant something to you then. And here's the thing. And don't get mad, married couple. It's just the truth. But see, when you were courting, boy, you had your best foot forward all the time. After you got married, you hit that best foot in the closet. <laughs> That best foot buried somewhere behind all them shoes. <laughs> oh, but when God. you wanted to impress, mm. you prepared. Amen. God says, what about preparing to meet me? Mm. Amen. And it's not, so, it, 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 it's, it's not so much about the activity, because see, that's what the Pharisees, do. a lot of people can go through the activity. Mm. And God's not looking for activity from us. He's looking for our heart. Amen. How is our heart prepared? How, how did you prepare your heart on this morning to come into this service to receive what you need from God on this day? Mm. Amen. Amen. And here's the thing. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me. <laughs> Jesus said unto the, the he said, they come, what did you come out here to see? John the Baptist, what are you coming out? Because he said, you know, what, what, what do you do? What do you want to see? Mm -hmm. 
See, here's the thing, and I think this is why we don't get prepared, because I think at the, just like the married couple have lost sight of something, and that is the value of the other person to a certain degree, don't mean you don't love them. But you know, now, where before, they had to, you had to look your best because, you know, Tyrone was coming. <laughs> Keisha was coming. Now, Sight of it. But if you would keep sight on the value that that person has, like that person don't have to be with you. That's right. That's right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know sometimes we can take each other for granted in a heartbeat, but you know what? They don't have to be with you. That's right. You ain't the only person in the world. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> you need to be thankful. Yeah, right. Amen. But we lose sight. But here's where we lose sight in the body. And this is even this is more important. We lose sight of the fact that coming to church and coming into the presence of God and getting into his presence and reading his word and receiving his word, whether it's in your own private time with God, whether it's a Sunday service, whether it's a weekday Bible study or a prayer service, whatever it is, we lose sight of the fact that it is truly at bottom about life and death. We do. We lose sight of that. We lose sight of the fact that in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, the devil comes not but to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then he said, I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. In one verse is summed up, life and death. The devil comes to take you out and Jesus comes to give you life. Wow. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you are spirit and life. Moses told the children of Israel as he was coming down toward the end of his ministry about to die. He said, he said, listen, he said, the word of God is your life. And so we don't think of it like that, so we don't prepare. But if we really would grasp that this is a life and death encounter, that every time you come into, into the presence of God, that you have the potential, the great potential to receive life-giving word that can help you defeat the enemy who's trying to take you out. I believe you would prepare differently. Yes. But we lose sight of that. And so church just becomes a thing. It just becomes, but really what's going on is life and death. That's why I don't have, I don't have time for people who are messing around in church. Because see, I come to church and I know something. I need a word from God that I might live. Amen. Amen. How do you feel about this? Let's say, glory to God, thank you Lord. Let's say, the army inter intercepted some enemy intelligence. And that intelligence said that an enemy force was going to attack uh, this part of New Jersey. Mm. And specifically, they were going to attack your community and your block. Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the army intercepted that, and they sent Marines and and, and, and soldiers and others to your block. You feel pretty good about that, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel good. And then the, the attack is going to take place the next day. And the night before the attack, these soldiers who have been there and sent by Uncle Sam, they got all the military, they got the equipment, they got all this stuff. They spend the night beforehand watching television late into the night they don't go over the battle plan with the commander. Or they go visiting people who they know in this part of town since they haven't been to this part of town in a while. So they go visit some family members and stay out late. And then they get up the next morning. Some of them say hello to the commander. Some of them say good morning. Some of them don't say anything. And most of them don't open the battle plan, but they put on their uniform, wow. strap on their weapons, and go to the front lines with no idea of the battle strategy to protect that neighborhood. How good you feel now? Are you glad that army there protecting you? Or are you kind of mad saying, wait a minute now? You supposed to be a soldier. You need to you need to be in the meeting with the commander to get the battle plan. Amen. You need to you turn that television on. You need to go to sleep. <laughs> he 
He ain't hanging out two o'clock in the morning watching some, you know. What do you call them channel where they just selling stuff? <laughs> them shopping networks. <laughs> that thing don't work. <laughs> that that thing they trying to sell you don't work. What are you watching it for? Come on, you need to wind down. No, you need to go to bed. You got a battle in the morning. Amen. Then he wake up the next morning and he just, you just going to walk past the commander like, get back over here and get into this meeting with the commander. The, the fight is on this morning. Wouldn't you be telling him that? Yes. But well, why aren't you telling yourself that? Mm. You know why? Because you don't think you're in a battle. Wow. Amen. And so what you do? Stay out late. Don't really worry about the commander. We come in and we just stumble onto the battle line. And then we wonder why we getting our butts kicked. Wow. We're not ready. Don't get mad at me. Prepare to meet your God. We got to prepare, y'all. Amen? Amen. We got to take time to prepare to receive from God. And see, we all, this, see, God is just all, he's stepping on everybody's toe, and here and all across the body, because see, you know what? There's too much of it going on. And see, I heard people say, why don't the church, why isn't the church as powerful as it should be? But we're not prepared. That's it. We're not prepared. We cannot just roll the ball out there and think you're going to play. You know what? You think you can do that? You think you can do that in basketball or in baseball? You're just going to roll, no practice. No team meetings, nothing. Just go out there. Okay, guys, let's go out there and play. You, do you really think that? No. But why do we do that? We come to church. We just go, okay, okay, folks, just come out here and let's worship. <laughs> we, just, we just roll the ball out. Wow. Let's prepare, amen. Let's take time and prepare. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something that, that, well, let's go back to Isaiah. Let's look what it said in Isaiah 29. He said, he said, you draw near me with your mouth and you honor me with your lips. So we say the right things. How many of us are good at saying the right things? Mm -hmm. Because see, if you're around long enough, you know the thing to say. You know the Sunday school answer. Mm -hmm. He said, but, but their hearts and minds are far from me. So God's not interested in our lips. He's interested in our heart. He's interested in, our, in, in, in what's going on in our heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He says, their fear and reverence of me are a commandment of men. In other words, you're taught by men how to do things by repetition, mm -hmm. without any thought as to the meaning. Mm -hmm. And then he says, listen, I'm going to do some things. And among the things he said, he said, I'm going to take away your wisdom and your understanding. Why does God say that? I'm going to take away your wisdom and your understanding. Why do we need wisdom and understanding anyway? To successfully live this life. Yes. God said wisdom is the principal thing. You know what that means? It's the most important thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your getting, get understanding. That's what he says in Proverbs 4. And so if we're going to get wisdom and understanding and we need that, God's saying, I'm going to take it from. Why would he take it from you? It really, it's not so much he's taking it from you as you and I take it from ourselves. Wow. Because if our heart is not knit unto God, understand God is the source of all wisdom. And if our heart's not knit, if it's knit to him, then we can receive the wisdom. If we start to have separation from him because our hearts are far from him, mm -hmm. then we now get far from his wisdom. And then we start making decisions based on what we think is right, and we start messing up. But it's all part of the preparation, because the preparation is getting our hearts and minds ready to receive from God. That prayer, that reading, and that meditation, and reflection, and quiet time that you're doing before you come to church, is to get your heart prepared to receive God's wisdom. Yes. But if you don't spend the time receiving, then your heart's going to come far from Him. You'll do the right things mm -hmm. through repetition, but it will mean nothing. I want to show you something that's, the, I think, one of the saddest verses in the Bible. It's found in, in, in Judges chapter 17. I'm going to ask you to turn there with me. In fact, Judges 17, I believe, is one of the saddest chapters in the Bible for a number of reasons. But we're not going to read the whole thing. But Judges chapter 17, amen, in verse number 6. 
Judges 17 and verse 6 says this. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And the indictment of the book of Judges is that verse right there because Judges ends with almost that identical verse in Judges 21, verse number 25. Right? That there was no king in Israel, and every man did what was right in their own eyes. That's sad because what's right in our own eyes is wrong. Yes. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that there, that there you know, uh, that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes. It may seem right to us, but if we're not operating in God's wisdom, then it's going to end in destruction, defeat, and despair for us. Wow. And see, that's what happens. If our heart is not close to God, God says, I'm going to take my wisdom from you. I'm going to take my understanding from you. Why? Because you're coming and you're coming before me. Uh, um, and, you know, the New Living Translation, he actually calls them hypocrites. That you're being hypocrites because your heart's not prepared to receive from me. Yeah. And if you're not prepared to receive, then, then you're not going to get the wisdom that I have for you. I don't care, I just need a blessing. <laughs> I just need a blessing from the Lord. You know how many people go to church because they just need a blessing? Mm -hmm. They just need a word? Yep. But see, you got to understand you're in a life and death situation. And it hurts my heart for people who don't, they don't understand. And you can see it because of the way they go about church. You can talk to folks, and it's right after church, and they're talking some mess. Yep. You can talk to people that right after church, they're talking mess. It's like, weren't you just in the service? Yes. Didn't you just hear the songs? Didn't you just hear pastor? Didn't you just, well, where were you? And I'm going to tell you this. There's yeah, some of us, God, oh, they're not cool way today, who on Sunday morning talk more about what we're doing after church than what we're going to do in church. Uh-oh. On your way to church, you're already talking about after church. Now after church, we gotta go to the mall. Now after church, we gotta go to the supermarket. Now after church, I gotta, I gotta take my car to the car wash. After church, I gotta watch the game. You ain't even get to church yet. Wow. But you preparing for after church. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God heard you. <laughs> you thought that nobody, because just when you came to church, you thought God was cool. He heard you doing all the preparation for after church. Now today after church. You didn't even leave the house yet. You talking to your family talking about what we got to do today at the church. Prepare for after church, but you didn't even prepare for church. Wow. Just got up, put your clothes on, ate your breakfast, brushed your teeth, and we got into the car. Come on, somebody. God said, your heart is far from me. He looked for people who were going to prepare. Why? Because that's the only way we can receive. But see, here's the sad thing. It said, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in their eyes. See, if you don't prepare to receive from God, it's like having no king. See, because it's like you don't, you're not putting the value on the relationship. And our hearts can get hard, and then after a while, we just start doing the things we want to do. And it ends in destruction. Well, look at what God did. Look at what God did. Let's turn to Exodus. We see something here with God. In fact, let's not even turn to Exodus. I, I hear something else. Let's turn to Numbers chapter 28. We might turn to Exodus if God wants, but let's turn to Numbers 28. And 29, praise the Lord. But let's start at 28 first. Let's look at verses 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet Savior unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And then he goes on and talks about all the daily offerings and the Sabbath offerings and the, and the offerings of the new moon and the, uh, the Passover offering and all that. Let's go to verse 20, uh, chapter 29, mm -hmm. verse 1. And in the seventh month of the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no serve our work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet Savior unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, and one and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. 
and their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil, three tenths of deal for a bullock, and two tenths of deal for a ram, and one tenth of deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. I'm not going to stop there. But when you read these, what you'll see is that God was telling them how they were going to have to present their offering unto him. Yes. How they were going to have, and they, how many of you know that their offering, their sacrifice was part of their worship? And he said, listen, you just can't come and bring me anything. This is about preparation. You say, I don't see that in here, but wait a minute. Did you see where it says that you need to bring, you know, one bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year? And then it says, without blemish. Mm -hmm. how, do you think, how do you think someone found a lamb, a ram, or a bullock without blemish? They had to go look for it. If they, had a, if they had a herd of cattle, they couldn't just grab any old lamb and then bring it to God. Mm -hmm. They had to look. They had to inspect. They had to take some time. Why? Because it's all part of the preparation. Wow. Amen? Amen? Look what it says here. Now, I don't know what one-tenth deal is. Right? One-tenth deal for the lamb, but three-tenths deal for the bullet, and two-tenths deal for the ram. You know what that means? Different measurements <laughs> for each one of these. So if you're going to have this, what you, don't you think you've got to measure your stuff out? You couldn't just come with your oil start pouring stuff on it like you're making some fried chicken. <laughs> you understand? You had to take some time. This took time to do. It took time to prepare. You had to, you know, if you knew you were going to sacrifice on tomorrow, you'd go in your flock today and separate out those lambs and bullocks and rams that were without blemish. Because you, you know, I gotta go look for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta find them. I gotta locate them. Yeah. I just can't grab anything and come to the Lord with it. I gotta prepare to meet God on the altar of sacrifice. Yeah. I can't just come to church on this morning. I gotta open up the Word and I gotta read. I gotta prepare to meet God today. What are you doing, brother? Leave me alone, man. Why? Come on. No, you got to. I'll be with you in a minute. I got to read my word first. Why? Because I'm preparing to meet God today. I need to hear from God because my life depends on it. The life of my family depends on it. Do you come to church with that in your mind? And if you don't, why not? Knowing that you're in a battle with an enemy who's trying to take you and your family out. Why aren't you in a, in a state of preparedness knowing I got a battle to fight? I need to receive commandments from the commander. I'm walking out with unforgiveness in my heart. I need the commander to tell me through the pastor, you need to forgive. I need to hear that word. Right? right? I need to hear that word. But I gotta prepare. I gotta pray. I gotta read. I gotta fast. Why? Because this is all part of my preparations to meet my God. We can turn to Exodus now. Look what look Exodus Exodus 40. Exodus chapter 40. God gave Moses all the commandments of, of how to build the tabernacle. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we get to Exodus 40, which is the last chapter in the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. All the preparations are made of the tabernacle. But watch what God says. Let's look at verse 13. He says now, he says, And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him, and sanctify him that he may do what? Minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats, and thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moses, watch this, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Verse 17, and it came to pass in the first month and the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and reared up the pillars. And he spread abroad the tent above over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above upon it. 
as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle and he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash withal. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their, their hands and their feet thereat when they went into the tent of the congregation and when they came near unto the altar they washed as the Lord commanded Moses and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate so Moses finished the work now I read all of that because of a couple of things one you see all of the preparation that Moses had to do in order to get the tabernacle ready for worship, mm -hmm. right? There were particular things he had to do in a certain way, and he had to do them as the Lord commanded him to do it. So he was going to prepare not only himself, but the people for worship and to receive from God for sacrifice and for praise, but he had to go through certain preparations. Mm -hmm. Amen? He had to go through certain preparations. And watch this. And those preparations were not according to how he thought it should be done. Right. Repeatedly, we are told, as the Lord commanded Moses. So many times that you got to think, God wants me to get that point right yes. there. When you ever you see something repeated like that, God is trying to make sure you and I don't miss it. And so what he's saying is not only did Moses have to go through certain, uh, a certain set of procedures in order to get ready to come before me and to prepare to meet me, but he had to do it according to what I told him to do. You can't do what's right in your own eyes. That leads to destruction because you're not operating in God's wisdom. That's why we can't afford to let our hearts get far from God. Don't draw to God with your lip and your, and your lips and your mouth, but you're far from him in your heart and in your mind. Amen? As the Lord commanded Moses. And then look at 34. After he did all this, and Moses finished the work, meaning he did exactly what God wanted him to do. Verse 34 says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Only after he went through the proper preparations did God meet the people in the tabernacle. And I want you to know God no different today. It's only after we go through the proper preparation that God is going to meet us in the tabernacle. Amen. And whether that tabernacle is your own body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, or the tabernacle is the church house, you got to go through preparation before the Lord is going to fill that place with his glory. And you got to do that preparation as the Lord commands it, and not as you do it. You can't do it the way you feel like doing it. Here's the way we can evaluate whether we're ready and we, we have made the proper preparations to receive the Lord. Psalm 104 says, Enter into his gates high thanksgiving. with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. With praise.
be thankful unto him and bless his name. So know how he's supposed to come into the house? With thanksgiving and praise and blessings. Now I'll tell you this, because I just tell on myself. There's times I come into the I come into the church. Sister Patricia, I come in. And me and my wife fussing in the car. And I come into the church. And you know, we this was before, you know, I was ministering, and we sit, we sit down there, you know, and we sitting in the chairs, and you know, before the music might be playing, trying to get us in the proper mood, and I'm there finishing my fussing. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And I see a whole lot of people coming to church the same Amen. way today. Yep. You finishing your fussing. Finishing your you coming to the gate, finishing your fussing. Oh. It don't say enter his gate with your unfinished fussing. <laughs> it said enter his gates with thanksgiving. <laughs> enter his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. With blessings. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes coming, you finishing an argument. <laughs> Finishing the argument with your child because they said something to you in the car and you didn't like, you wait till I get you home. I'm coming right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, music is playing, you know, in the background about great grace and mercy. And, and, and the first scripture reading today is, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And you just sit there and say, I'm going to get you and I get them. It's just going all over your head. Why? Because you're not prepared. You're not prepared. Amen. We play the music before service because that's just a way of preparation. You know, to hear God, hear someone speaking and singing about the goodness of God. It's not time to have your little chit-chatting. Come on, somebody. I hear the chit-chat. I hear laughing. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? Amen. We about... Life and death. I'm telling you now, when the soldier's about to hit the front line, it would bother me. If five minutes before the first shot is fired, they're telling jokes and stuff. Oh Lord. That would bother. Would that bother you? Amen. Here we are though. The word is about to come forth. That means you're going to get some instruction about how to win this war that you're in. And now instead of preparing, you like telling Joe, hey, you saw that last NLT? That was funny. Yeah. It might have been funny, but now it ain't the time for that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God trying to shake us by the scruff of the neck. <laughs> Prepare to meet your Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you? Let, let's turn before you have revolt against the Lord today. <laughs> How many of you know God is speaking directly to you? Amen. Amen. Because you know, you 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 know, you know, you know <laughs> what you, what kind of preparation you go through. You know. Amen. Amen. And God's saying we got to take it up. Let's look, at, let's look at one last place as we close today. Prepare to meet your God. Matthew 25. We have to prepare to meet God. Amen? Amen. We don't just walk up into the meeting with God. Amen? And you can see, you're not going to receive and you could get hurt. Amen. Amen. You're not going to receive and you could get hurt. We have to prepare to meet God. Let's make the preparation. I mean, even the Christmas song talks about, you know, joy to the world, right? Mm -hmm. Let every heart prepare him room. Yes. Amen? Amen? You got to prepare your heart and, and clear your heart of junk and gunk and all this other kind of stuff. Yes. Not just for communion, amen? How are you going to receive from God unless you ask him to, to, to cleanse your heart first? I did some stuff on yesterday. I said some stuff that was wrong on yesterday. I thought some stuff that was wrong. I acted in ways that was wrong. Lord, I need you to forgive me. Cleanse my heart. Renew my mind on this morning so that I can receive from you. I got to prepare. Amen. You have to prepare. We have to prepare. Amen. Let's look at the parable of the ten virgins. Matthew chapter 25, verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, no anointing. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
But the wives took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And we know that the oil is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. We provide the anointing. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And we understand that when we saw that in Zechariah, there was lampstands filled with an unending supply of oil. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer saying, not so, <laughs> not so, why? Lest there be not enough for us and you. Mm -hmm. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that were ready, they that were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Now truly this is a story about being ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. But please don't miss it. See, a part of your readiness for the future is being ready now. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and there's certain principles that you must operate in now if you're going to be successful in future and the principle here is about being prepared mm -hmm. amen? amen it's about being prepared five of these these maidens didn't have the oil this is about how they were living were they living in a state where they were prepared to receive God when God came and when he came they weren't prepared to receive him right and because of that, they got shut out. But those who were prepared to receive from God were ready, went in with him, and got all the promises and all the benefits and all the blessings that come from a life that's lived in constant readiness. Yes. But we got to be ready to receive from God when he comes. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, here's the truth, and just understand this. God never comes into your situation. He's already there. You're the one who stumbles into the situation. Yes. Right? right? God's already there. You're the one who finds out that you ain't got no money right now. God knew that before you got there. Right. He's ever present. So you don't got to wait for God to come. He's there. But when you get there, are you prepared to meet him? Or do you not have enough oil in your lamp? Wow. Amen? You need to have that oil in your lamp. You need to be ready. And that's what this is about. So let us prepare to meet God. Amen? Amen. When, you, when, when God is now ready to move in your life, are you going to be prepared for the move? And the way you're going to do that, you've got to be prepared each and every day. Please understand, you're in a battle of life and death. And you, you think, oh, you just overstated. It's not overstated. Please know, the devil trying, then you don't believe the Bible if you don't believe what I'm saying. Amen. Because the Bible tells us that we are in a battle. Uh, we're in a battle with, with a prince of darkness who's looking to take us out. But we already have the victory, but don't turn the victory into the defeat by not being prepared. Amen. Amen. Prepare to meet God. How are you going to prepare? Stay in your word. Stay in your word. Stay in your word. Before you come to church, don't come to church ever again without cracking open your Bible and reading at least a couple of verses. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Without praying, without reflecting. Amen. Somebody want to talk to you, you get close to the church, you got to say, you know what? I don't feel like talking about, you know, MTV Cribs right now. I don't feel like talking about the movie we saw last night right about now. Sometimes I come to church, you don't know. You be thinking, I'm mad with my family. I ain't talking to them. I ain't got nothing. Uh -uh. I'm getting my mind ready. Amen. And you there, like, he ain't, what's going on here? He ain't saying nothing. No, you don't know. I got to receive. I don't know about you. Right. But I have to receive something. Amen. Protect that part of you and be prepared to receive from God because if you don't receive from God, your very life could be hanging in the balance over it. You're about to make a decision. You need to get that wisdom from God. Amen? Amen. 
prepared to receive from God. So let us make preparation. Let us not let God not say to us, listen, you draw near to me with your hands and, and your and your lips and your mouth. You're doing all the right things and going through all the right motions, but it doesn't mean anything. Amen. Amen. He wants our hearts to be truly prepared to receive from him. Yes. And if we're going to do that, amen, we got to take some time to prepare to receive from God. Because, again, what we prepare for, this, the, the level to which we prepare for a thing tells us and the whole world how important it is unto us. Amen? Amen. And I don't know about you. God's important to me, so I'm going to prepare. It means I got to get up early. I'm preparing. Amen? Amen. Uh, I got I to gotta leave my house 5.30 on Monday just to go teach. But guess what I do? I get up at 3, 3.30 so I make sure I got some time with God. I ain't walking out of the house. Well, I got to leave it early so I don't got time to pray. The devil is a liar. I'm getting up early. I'm going to iron my clothes the night before. I'm going to take a shower the night before. I'm going to set my clothes out the night before. Why? Because I don't want none of that to hold me up. That's right. I got to have some time with God. That's preparation, amen? Amen. Just like you prepare for your body. Stand on, let's pray today, amen? Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, for your word. Father, sometimes your word is hard, but we need a hard word. Yes. As Father, you even said it in the scriptures God that you chasten us yes. as a father but you chasten us because you love us and so father we thank you oh God for the word we thank yes. you Lord for bringing us face to face with ourselves yes. and God now having seen it Lord we set ourselves to change according to your will yes. father in the name of Jesus help us Lord by your spirit yes. to be better prepared each and every time we come before you father when we come into this house for Sunday school for church for Bible study Father, even if we have uh, those private devotional times, let us prepare for them, O oh God. Let us not just come in, but to take time to prepare to meet our God. Yes. Prepare to meet you at the altar of sacrifice. Prepare to meet you at that place of our need. Yes. That, Father, that, that our need might be met according to your will and according to your riches. Father, we ask you to forgive us for all those times, God, that we yes, just merely God. rolled out of bed. We just rolled out of wherever we were doing yes. and rolled up into the house. Father, forgive us for the cavalier and casual way we have gone about it. Yes. And Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace that you yes. extend toward us now that yes. gives us another chance to do it better and to do it right. And Father, we in all humility and meekness vow and purpose to do just that. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you God. We thank you, God, that from this day forward, we will always prepare to meet our God. Yes. And we'll do it, oh God, according to your direction, as the Lord commands us. Enter into your presence, enter into your, your presence with praise and thanksgiving and yes, blessings oh God. and all the good things that you tell us in your word. Father, we thank you for it and we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.